Hey guys, and welcome to the third tutorial. Um, in this tutorial, we'll be learning a bit about triggers. I'm probably going to make two tutorials about triggers because there's a bit more to learn. So we'll just go ahead and create a. We'll go into the editor. We'll just continue on with our test test uh, mission. Okay, we'll just clear everything. Okay, so I'm going to try and get through as much as I can in the 10 minutes that YouTube gives me. Alright, so first thing is, let's say you want to make a trigger where um, something happens when something dies. Okay, so actually first thing I want to explain is a bit about the triggers. So click F3, press F3 on your keyboard, or just click triggers, and then double click wherever you want to put the trigger. It usually doesn't matter, depends what you're what you're wanting to do. So for now, um, this is the trigger interface. Axis A and B is basically the circle or the shape that will be created around the trigger. You can make it either an ellipse or a rectangle. Mm, activation is who will activate this trigger whether it's off 4 blue 4 independent civilian etc etc or you can use game logics which I might make tutorials about those later and then let's say we say op 4 activates it and how will op 4 activate it it can be activated whether op 4 is present in this trigger area and that's when you need an axis a and b right because then you need a specific specific area or they could be not present so that means if op 4 isn't there the trigger is activated Mm. There is detected by blue 4, so if, if up 4 is detected by blue 4 in the specific area, or if you put 0 and 0 for A and B, it'll be detected anywhere on the map. And the same thing goes for all the other detected ones. Countdown and timeout, um, basically, timeout counts uh, up, or if let's say something happens, how do, I don't know how to explain it, but basically, it's basically t t timeout is counting up and countdown is counting down. Type is usually used for, um, usually when you want to end the game. Or when the game ends and the team loses, you could put lose. And then name and text, uh, that'll just show up on the trigger just like we use with units. Now in the condition field, you'll always have this. If you take out this, everything above the condition field, I mean everything above the type field, is disregarded. Everything. Actually, not the timeout, everything above timeout and countdown is disregarded. Okay, because when you put this, then it's including this whole activation. Right? So, like I said, now let's try and make a trigger where something happens after something dies. So mm, let's say we have an anti-tank guy and he is to take out an enemy, I don't know, a Tunguska or something. So I'll create a USMC, USMC anti-tank man. And further down the runway, we'll put uh, enemy Tunguska. All right. So now, next thing we have to do is, well, you have to name the Tunguska because uh, you'll see why. So we'll name it Tung One. Put the name in there. Press OK. And you don't have to name the um, the javelin guy. So now we create a trigger. Uh, it's better to keep tri depending on what you want to do, but I usually keep my triggers a little off the map so they're not scattered everywhere inside the play area. So we'll put a trigger around maybe the edge of the airfield. We'll put it to zero and zero because it doesn't matter where the Tunguska is taken out as long as it's taken out.
Um, we don't need anything by the activation because it doesn't matter who takes it out. As long as the Tungusk is dead, then something will happen. So all we need to worry about is a condition and activation field for now. So in the condition field, um, basically what you're going to have to do is put You can use exclamation mark alive, or you can also use um, not alive. And then you just put the name of the Tunguska, so in this case it was Tung1. Alright, so basically, and then for on activation, let's say, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just check if it's working, so we'll put hint. Then in uh, double quotes, we'll put Tunguska down. It's good to use semicolons. It's good to make it a habit. You don't have to, though, if you're only putting one line. And now we'll just press OK. Save it as test. And preview it. All right. Let's shoot. And there you go, top right hand corner says Tunguska is down. So that's what the trigger does. But I mean, usually in missions you want, um, like let's say you don't just want text to come up, you want something else to happen. Uh, for example, in Operation Rasoon, one of my missions, um, I have helicopters to come unlocked after the anti-air, which is a Tunguska is taken out. So how would we do that? Well, let me show you.